everyone! My name is Maki and I've come all the way from Japan to share with you the wonders of Gunnam. The story of Marvel Suit Gunnam the Witch from Mercury has come to a conclusion. Did you all enjoy it? In the final episode, various abilities were demonstrated and little by little, the settings of the Gundam Calibre were revealed this time. We'll delve into the identity of the Gundam Calibre as far as we currently understand it. Gundam Calibre is the Gundam that the protagonist slept aboard at last. The first generation Gundam was a prototype mobile suit of the Air Federation forces and it was the first Gundam that the protagonist, Amara Ray boarded. The day didn't know how games through a Gundam led to the birth of many Marvel suits. Similarly, Gundam Caliber is a unit that was manufactured a long time before the story began based on it. Other Marvel suits beginning with Gundam Elio were born. Gundam Caliber was a unit that competed with Gundam Robbers in a competition. They fought in a selection process to determine the most suitable unit for further development. However, its design, which disregarded the life of the pilot, was deemed problematic and it was defeated by Robbers. This is just my personal opinion. But I wonder if they didn't notice these issues before submission. In fact, there are mobile suits in the Gundam series that were developed with the possibility of losing in competition in mind. Yeah, that appeared in the original Gundam is one such unit. It has a somewhat unstable existence as its settings change quite a bit. Yoshiyuki Tumino, the creator of the Gundam series, considered it as a unit specially ordered by Kano Makubo of the same forces. In other settings, it is sometimes stated that it competed with Gelguk for the position of main mass production model. By integrating both settings, the information that it was difficult to develop for Kano Makyu personally, but it was possible to secure a budget if it was developed under the pretext of submitting it to a competition, came about. Could it have been a similar reason for Gundam Calibran? This is just my speculation. Please be aware that this is not official information. What do you think of the idea that Caliburn was developed and manufactured for the purpose of exploring the limits of Gundam technology? Could the fact that it was a unit that pursued the limits of performance have led to its ability to play an active role even after 21 years? In this way of thinking Wing Gundam Zero, which appeared in Gundam Wing, is a similar existence. It's a Gundam that disregarded the life of the pirate in pursuit of the highest level of technology. A significant feature of the Gundam Caliber is that it does not have a Daily Storm filter installed. By utilizing an element called Comet, communication becomes possible between humans and machines. This is a crucial setting in the Witch from Mercury. This gave birth to the existence of gun technology, which is then applied to prosthetic arms and legs. If it's something the size of a prosthetic hand, identical to a human body part, it can be used without any issues. But what would happen if you tried to operate something much larger than a human? In the prologue, a character resembling a critic pointed out this issue. It is dangerous to operate an object that is 18 meters tall. A significant strain occurs when the vast amount of information generated to move a large machine falls into a human. This consequence is detected in the prologue. We call this flow of data a data storm, and the filter against it is called a data storm filter. The day the stone filter is used to reduce the burden on humans. 
Due to the effect of this filter, you can safely operate the Gundam using Pomet and Gundam technology. However, passing through the filter results in information loss. This can lead to a decrease in performance. In the story, Gundam Caliban was explained as follows. Even if you use the same amount of Pomet, Gundam Caliban has an advantage. It can exhibit and maintain a higher score. The score here refers to the Pomet score. The act of connecting a Gundam and a human more strongly is called raising the Pomet score. Gundam Caliburn, which does not have a Daily Storm filter, can demonstrate more powerful performance than other Gundams. This is possible because the filter does not reduce the amount of Pomet flowing in. Of course, a human who can withstand a high Pomet score is required to operate it. Let's now take a look at the unique armaments. First is the Bean Gun, which has a shape similar to a witch's broom. It was announced that the official name is the Valuable Rod Rifle. It can fire a beam with an extremely long range. Moreover, it's characteristic for its ability to destroy multiple targets at the same time. Also, it can be used as a beam saver by emitting for an extended time. Another characteristic is the high thrust thruster installed on the opposite side of the muzzle. It's an essential piece of equipment that allows the avoidance of attacks from a large number of gunners or gambits. However, it also has a significant weakness. This weapon provides a powerful propulsion force, but if it is destroyed, the function is lost. Slekta sometimes takes a protective posture with the valuable rod rifle during a beam saber battle. There is another significant weakness. It's extremely difficult to control. Because it's mounted on the arm foils, it's challenging to generate thruster force straight backward. However, select to leverage this characteristic to realize an advantageous way of fighting. She manipulated the direction of the thrust generated by swinging the valuable rod rifle, a characteristic not installed in the unit itself. This is a challenging operation with backhole leg thrusters. You can understand that Slector's technique is outstanding. Next is the Beam Saber. It's a very simple weapon. However, it can fight on par with the Beam Saber of the Gundam Elio, which Prospera has upgraded. It's surprising that the Gundam manufacturer 21 years ago has a Beam Saber output that can combat current, custom models. Perhaps the competition with Mubris was predicated on defeat due to excessive performance and disregard for human life. Finally, there's the head-mounted Vulcan Gun. It's a traditional armament in the Gundam series. Although it's not a powerful weapon, if used appropriately it can turn the tide of battle. Let's examine Selector's technique. This is the scene where she attacks the additional equipment of the Gano node. She's destroying the parts with a blue pattern called shell units. These shell units are parts used by units using Gano technology for information processing. They're also installed in other Gangnams. The Gano node Having this destroyed lost its link with the additional equipment and had to discard it. Taking advantage of this opportunity, Slipta distanced herself from the Gano node, regained her posture to gain, and successfully destroyed it. Those of you who have watched The Witch from Mercury in its entirety must surely have had questions. Wait a minute! The Gundam Caliburn's equipment still exists. That's right! 
The Gundam Caliban has inherited the gambit of the Gundam Elio. The Gundam Caliban had a connector-like feature for adding equipment, which has been a topic of discussion among fans. By inheriting the gambit of the Gundam Elio, it reaches its full form. And when the gambit was attached to the Gundam Caliban, the color of the gambit changed. What kind of phenomenon is this? At present, the details have not been explicitly stated. However, in the world of the Witch from Mercury, it's possible to change the properties of an object by altering the molecular arrangement through techniques such as voltage and programming. You must have witnessed this phenomenon many times. Don't you remember? It's the scene where Slectis' uniform changes color. The same phenomenon occurred with the Gundam Caliber and very fashionable, isn't it? With this, the mystery of Gundam Caliber's unbalanced equipment has been solved. It is now capable of defending and dealing with approaching enemies thanks to the Gambit. It was a unit that was designed with the assumption of equipping the Gambit. By increasing the planet's score, even more hidden abilities are unlocked. You all saw it in the final episode. The state of the planet's core, growing in rainbow colors. Until now, it has been thought that the maximum value of the planet's core was 8. However, a higher level planet's core has emerged, growing in rainbow colors. With this power, it became possible to override and control a massive power transmission system located on the moon from the area called Lack Range 4, where Slechta and her friends are. The distance from Lack Range 4 to the moon is subject to various opinions, but many cite the figure around 400,000 kilometers. It's a distance unimaginable. And it was brought under control in an instant. And do you remember? Let's go back in time a little bit. It's the scene where Elric, with the Gundam Elio, battled the large forces of the Space Council Union. In that scene, the Gundam Elio connected with Quiet Zero dominated the battlefield using the power of numerous Gundam nodes. You can understand that the Gundam Elio alone can't exert much power. What happened to Quiet Zero when Gundam Caliburn brought the moon under control? That's right, it had stopped functioning. It's an incredible ability. However, it might have been difficult for the Gundam Caliburn alone to trigger this phenomenon. It was using the power of the other three Gundams to activate its ability. Did you want to recreate this fantastic scene at home? If so, you will need to purchase plastic models of the four Gundams. And then, a mysterious phenomenon occurred. The deceased showed themselves. Do you think this is magic? There is a saying that advanced science is indistinguishable from magic. In fact, there was a small hint in the witch from Mercury. Do you remember the word organoid archive? To put it very simply, this is a term that refers to the substitution of a human existence with data. When Elon, who had previously exited the scene, reappeared, this existence was mentioned. When El recrossed his life, transferring him into the Daily Storm was a similar technology. A planet can exchange information between humans and machines. What if it were possible to treat human existence itself as data? With the Rainbow Planet's core, Gundam Caliber made this phenomenon possible. Moreover, it is possible to manipulate the time and scenery perceived by humans. Let's take a look at the scene where Prospera meets the people of Baez and Delric. It's a very moving scene, but pay attention to the background. 
prospered observing Swift and her companions in space. However, she turns around at the sound of her husband Nadim's voice. What does the background look like? Prosper talking to the people of Baez. Behind her, the form of Gundam Robis is present. And then Slipter appears of farming and forgiving Prosper's actions. Behind her, the Gundam Elia appears. Prosper, who exchanged words with Slipter. Suddenly, she hears Elric's voice. Surprised, she turns around, and behind her is not the Gundam Elio, but the figure of Elric. Did Gundam Caliburn use the power of the Rainbow Pumit's core to show her an illusion? Or does Gundam Caliburn possess the power to control even time? I can't judge. There is a line in episode 41 of the original Gundam. Someday, man will be able to control even time. This is a scene where the new possibility of mankind, the nudie, which has started to evolve, is being discussed. After these words, the protagonist Amal Wei faces a soft farewell with a nudie girl named Lois Eve. How did you feel about the reunion of Prospera and Delric? However, this reunion scene does not last long. Gundam Caliburn's formidable power also has the drawback of consuming a large amount of permit particles. The rest is as you witnessed. The surrounding permit equipment disintegrated at the particle level and disappeared. But in the end, Slector succeeded in transferring Elric's soul to a cube-shaped object. Was this the last ability of Gundam Caliburn? In Elric's words, it was explained as something only Slector can do. The final miracle activated might not have been by Gundam Caliburn, but a phenomenon performed by the witch from Mercury. This concludes my explanation for the day. It was a challenging final episode where no battles occurred. However, when you interpret it, I believe it was very fitting for a Gundam series finale. I would be very happy if you could write in the comments section what you perceived. You can include predictions and imaginings as well. Expanding various imaginations together is a wonderful way to enjoy the Gundam series. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.